Hi guys, welcome back to another video here at Lovin' Off The Land. Now this week we're doing something a little different and taking a break from our kind of vlog style videos following along with our journey to only eat what we can catch, grow, harvest, or raise. So if you're interested in hearing more about that journey, definitely hit subscribe below and check out some of our other videos. But this week we are be going into our third update on our mealworm farm. We have two other kind of prior videos on how we started it, how it was doing after a few months, and we are now at the seventh month process. And as you can see behind me, if you watch the first videos, our mealworm farm has been slowly expanding. So now we've kind of got it into the phase where some of the beetles that we originally got that were hatching eggs that were turning into the mealworms uh, are starting to die off at the end of their life cycle. And so we're going to kind of run through where things are at, what progress we've had, um, and also talk about some of our challenges that you'll kind of see along the way. And the honest answer is with some of our beetles, I think we went through a stage where we didn't feed them enough vegetables and weren't getting enough water. So we have had more than we thought die off, but our mealworms and the other cycles have been going really well. Um, so we're just gonna plan moving forward on how to keep that going. I hope you're as excited as the turkeys are for this video and let's get into it. So as you can see, and if you've watched our first videos, you know that we've kind of done a multi-layered system here where the top containers here have a mesh bottom. And if you want to see all the details of how to kind of start the mealworm farm from scratch, you can go back and watch our first video that we'll post down in the comments below. So we're not going to get too much into that, but one of the mesh bottoms had either the glue come off or they've chewed through it. So we're doing a bit of a repair on that today. And also starting to sift out a lot of the vegetable scraps that are in there, uh, as well as the dead beetles, which will feed to our chickens and just kind of consolidate things and keep them going as well as getting into a bin of mealworms that we're going to keep letting go into the pupa stage that will hatch into beetles just to kind of keep our cycle going. So first thing we're going to do is start on kind of one of our largest sifters. We have a bunch of different sizes here that we'll kind of work our way down to. The first one is just going to be to kind of sift out any vegetable scraps that we'll throw into the compost and then we'll kind of go into a finer and finer sifting ending off with sifting out their frass which is otherwise beetle poop, mealworm poop. It's really good for your garden. So you'll, we'll show you exactly what that looks like. It's a good compost as well. If you're planting starts and things like that in smaller containers, it's really good to include that in too. So let's get sifting. So this is one of our first mealworm bins here. It'll probably have a little bit fall out, but you can kind of see in the bottom there that there is a mesh bottom. And the reason for that is that as the beetles lay their eggs, the eggs in the smaller pieces of uh, bran, or we've got some oats in here as well, fall through directly into the container below. And that's where those eggs will start to hatch into mealworms as they go through that cycle. It's just good to keep them separated. That way the beetles don't end up eating the small mealworms, which they may do if you leave them together. But you will see some survive. We do have some mealworms in some of our uh, beetle bins as well. It just kind of ended up in there too. So we'll get to our first thing of sifting here. And so we're just gonna kind of clear out the vegetable scraps. So the beetles and the mealworms actually don't drink. You don't ever give them any water, but what you do is give them vegetables. So we throw in carrots, potatoes are a really good one. Anything kind of solid like that that has a high water content is really good. And eating that is actually how they get their, their water for their, their system. So the bottom of this mess actually looks pretty good. So we may use this one just to throw all of our beetles back into to start the next cycle that we're gonna go. Five gallon buckets, or this is a smaller bucket here. Uh, these sifters fit really well on the top and you can just kind of sift through there. And most of the beetles should fall through um, on this one as well. few of those guys along there because we do definitely want to keep all of our live ones and I'm going to set this aside here and we'll zoom in on this a little after and show you guys this is a fully formed uh, pupa which is kind of what we're hoping for to continue our next cycle and this is what the beetles will turn or the last stage before they turn back into the beetles so the beetles lay the eggs the eggs turn into the mealworms the mealworms turn into the pupa and then these will eventually hatch uh, back into the beetle. So they really don't move much. They almost look dead, but this is kind of their incubation stage before they hatch back into a beetle. So I'm just gonna put that one aside there. Because we definitely wanna be keeping those. And finish giving these guys a little sift. I'm just gonna pick the last few out here, especially the live ones, because we wanna keep those. The rest don't really matter because they're gonna go to the chickens. Uh, as well, so their life cycle moves along a lot faster when they are indoors. So it's been seven months to get to this point, which is a long time to kind of 
longer than we thought to get them going. So it does take quite a while to get established. But yeah, once it's up and running, the cycle's moving pretty quick at this point. So you can see there, that's all of our vegetable scap scraps, sorry. We'll get a little bin for those that we'll feed to the chickens and then we'll come back and get into the next step of sifting. Okay, so one thing we always like to do too while we're sifting and emptying out these bins anyways is just kind of check the mesh along the bottom um, that we glued in and we did find a little spot in this one um, that had some beetles getting underneath. So we have our glue gun ready that's already been heating up and we're just going to do a quick touch up um, to kind of seal that off before we put more back in here. Okay, so we've got that a little more secured and now we're gonna get on to sifting our next tub that's got some more beetles in it. So we've got our next one of beetles here too. Same thing, a lot of dead ones has kind of gone through their life cycle or again, because we went through a stretch long without feeding them. So we're just combining all the beetles into one here. We're just gonna start again with one or two trays of beetles in the top to keep that cycle going. But we're gonna combine them all together for now just to kind of save some time on the next sifting cycle that bin looks pretty good so it doesn't look like we have to do any repairs on there which is nice and we'll just sift these guys through as well and a few of the bigger beetles don't sift through so we're just going to kind of pick off our uh, live ones we want to be saving as many as possible right now if you weren't worried about the amount of beetles you have you don't really need to worry about this you can feed these straight to your chickens anyways um, if you feel like you've got plenty but for us just because we have a few less in this life cycle than we'd like we're going to take the time to make sure we save everyone but your chickens will love this uh, if not Okay, so you can see on this one here, um, this is the one I know has an issue, um, and they've been getting through the mesh. You can see how many beetles have dropped down into this level where there are um, eggs and now some small mealworms growing. So we know in this one, there's definitely some damage to the mesh here. So uh, I'm just gonna sift this one out, then we'll do that one and do a repair, and then we'll get on to the next phase. One more. And you can see here, this is the one we've had kind of problems with, uh, with the mealworms getting through and beetles getting underneath the mesh. Uh, so this is definitely the one we need to fix up before moving forward here. So I'm just trying to get a couple of those mealworms and beetles out that are stuck underneath that uh, that mesh to get everyone out of them before we seal it. Okay, so we just put all our vegetable scraps off to the side there and then I'm going to fix the main kind of tub here in the mesh at the bottom um, that we need to get fixed before we put them back in to keep going. Okay, so that's all sealed up. We're gonna let that glue uh, cool down a little bit and we're going to sift this one more time just to get out all of that frass, do it on this kind of smaller um, sift there. So we'll get into that and do that all at once and then get the beetles back into their home. Okay, so we're just gonna dump these back into here so I can dump back into this bucket. So this is kind of all of our, all of our tubs of beetles combined into one. So we'll have to do a couple goes here moving forward. And now we're just gonna go to the next size down uh, on our sifters here. So no beetles or mealworms should be getting through this size. Uh, we're just gonna get rid of some of the more of the frass and little things um, that we don't want in our bins anymore. I'm gonna try not to spill this. All right, so there's not a ton that's gonna come out of that second sift, um, just kind of any frass that's left that we wanna separate, which is the poop of any mealworms that were in there. Um, we're gonna kind of take any mealworms out of that one that we see and fire them into our ones 
that are supposed to have the mealworms in it. So that was just a few that were able to hatch in that top layer with the beetles that are there, which isn't many, but sometimes a few escape and do quite well in there. So um, now that we've got that sifted, we're gonna put that back into our amended uh, top drawer here with the mesh bottom. So that these beetles can continue to lay and start that cycle all over again. There's probably some dead ones. We'll continue to pick those out as we go along, um, but we're gonna get that going and move into sifting the mealworms, which is a little more exciting to show you all the kind of frass that comes from them. So one other thing we're gonna do here um, as we're moving along, which we'll probably just show you one or two, but I'll be doing the whole time, is any kind of pupa that I find or really advanced mealworms will be sticking into our kind of new pupa tub here. And those are the ones that we are gonna let fully develop into that pupa stage and back into beetles to keep that cycle going. So uh, we've got our one guy that we saved up top there that we showed you. And then as I go through here, any mealworms that I'm picking out that seem nice and developed, we'll be putting into there as well to let them continue on their development stage. All right, so next we're gonna get into sorting all of our mealworm bins. Uh, and again, because we've been doing this at seven months, we have them at varying different stages. So you can kind of see here, they have different times on them from February 9th or back November 6th of last year when they were started. So they're all at different stages. That's another reason that we have three layers too, so that we don't get too many eggs falling into one and they're that far apart in their life cycle. We'll let the eggs drop in there for a couple months move that to the bottom one and put another empty one underneath for the sort of the next cycle. And that way we kind of always have uh, mealworms at different stages of their life form. So this is one of our older ones that was started uh, in November of last year. Sorry, these guys are a little trickier to get out. Last time I spilt this whole thing, so I'm gonna be a little more careful this time. There we go. And then before I dump this out to sift it, we'll just show you here you can actually kind of see the layers in the bin and we'll zoom in and show you as well uh, inside, but you can just see the smaller particles of frass with their poop at the bottom. Um, and then their layer of bram, which is on top. It's really distinct uh, once you're able to see it. We didn't really know what the difference was gonna look like when we started it, uh, but once you kind of see it, you can definitely tell that difference. So that's definitely stuff we wanna start sifting out of here now. So you can really see the, uh, the difference there in those smaller frass or poop particles. So that's what we're gonna try and get out of here today. Um, I probably should be wearing a mask because these are definitely not very good for um, breathing in. So definitely if you have sensitive allergies uh, or worried about it, put a mask on while you are doing this. And again, you can just see that difference up here uh, in what that kind of small frass um, looks like that will accumulate at the bottom of your bins. So you can kind of see a few of these ones that are starting to turn a little bit more white. We're getting closer to that kind of pupa stage. So we're gonna take those uh, and feed them into our pupa bin before we dump the rest of those mealworms back into uh, to their bin to keep growing a bit. So we've got our mealworms there. They're gonna go back into this bin and they'll all kind of be stuck through here. So we'll just give those guys a bit of a minute and they'll kind of fall out on their own. And this we're gonna dump into an empty tub and sift one more time. There are a bunch of smaller worms that are still left in here. So we're gonna to go to another sift one side down just to separate that frass again and keep some of these mealworms so that we are not throwing them out. And so again, we just got our next size down there that all of the frass is going to get through. Uh, the smaller mealworms as well as some of the bran is going to stay, which is fine as well. We don't need to get rid of that. So it's just really kind of sifting out all of that uh, frass that we want to accomplish. Okay, so we've done our second sift there and you can see we've got a lot more mealworms in there. Well, we've kept some of the bran. Also, they kind of shed their skin a lot. So if you wanted to, you can kind of take the time to separate that as well. It's not gonna hurt them staying in there. So uh, for our sake, we're just gonna dump that back in. 
And then we'll put a little bran more in there so they can keep going again. We're going to feed some of these to the chickens, which we'll show you, uh, and give them a nice little treat. And also in here too, you can see there are still a few mealworms that snuck through. Some of the younger ones, there'll be some eggs in there. So at this point for us, it's not really worth separating to save a few small ones. We've got enough of a cycle going here um, that it doesn't really matter. Um, but we will zoom in and just show you this kind of frass um, and just how good that will be for your garden. So we save this, we'll put that in, we're planting new plants, really, really good for them. You'll notice a big difference in that as well. So if you're not only raising uh, mealworms for your chicken, you'll be helping your garden out as well. So we'll just zoom in and show you that quickly and we'll show you one more thing and then we'll move on to feeding our chickens. So we have some other bins here as well that we started a little bit later than those. Uh, and you can see all the kind of skins there, the lightest things, so they kind of pile up on top there. And then you're gonna have your bran underneath and your frass at the bottom. So we'll just kind of zoom in and show you there and you can kind of see those layers. That one does have a bit of frass in the bottom. We're not gonna bother sorting that through just yet. We'll wait till this gets a little bit more developed um, like the other one does, but you can kind of clean these out and, uh, and sift them as often or as little as you like, as long as you make sure that there is enough bran. We noticed that first, that was one of our mistakes is there looked like there was lots of material in there for them to eat, uh, either bran or oats that they will eat. And we didn't really notice the difference uh, in the frass until we looked closely at it and realized that they didn't have much food. So just make sure you're keeping an eye on that level and there is enough bran on top for them to eat and enough vegetables in there um, that they're able to eat to get their water as well. And I think I mentioned it earlier, but just so they are in a warm environment, they will uh, move through their life cycle so much faster. Uh, if they're in a warm environment, we put them in our basement. so it's a lot warmer than it was outside during the winter. So um, let's do that. We're gonna sift one more uh, quick one of our developed ones to go take to our chickens and then we'll end it off. Okay, so we've got all of our mealworms there. We're just gonna take a bunch up and uh, show you how much our chickens love these things. So um, yeah, that is it for this week's video. We hope you found that really interesting uh, and helps you in your journey. Uh, obviously a bunch of mistakes that we made along the way. We really try and kind of give you an authentic uh, overview of what it's like trying these things for the first time. So this has been our journey. We hope you found it useful. Again, you can go back and watch our first video on how we put these together, as well as our second update uh, video as things were getting going. And help us out and hit like and subscribe below. And uh, let's go say hi to the chickens and give them a nice little treat. Hey. God, they go quick, eh? <laughs> you like the hoose? Ha, 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 ha.